What all have you lost due to your addiction? Like what have I lost? Mm -hmm. Um, everything. Everything. Do you have any talents that we um, need to know about? Um, I like doing art. <laughs> when you hear art, what does it mean to you? Um, I guess just expressing yourself, but in a different way besides like words. Hey, what's up, AML fam? We back in the studio, and today we have Melanie. How you doing, Melanie? Hey, I'm good. How are you doing? Thank God for life, Melanie. Yeah. So I see you have been around the YouTube block. Yeah. <laughs> you have done some interviews with some other people, but now yeah. you're with the AML family. So we're just going to start off from scratch, all right? All right. Sounds how, good. Yeah. How old are you? Um, 21. And where are you from originally? Um, originally, I'm from, I guess you could say, Bucks County, like Bristol, Bristol Borough. Yo, shout out Bucks mm. County. We out there mm. in the building. Tell us a little bit about you. Um, you know, I was born really in Levittown, but I was raised in Bristol. Um, you know, I danced when I was younger, from like two until about like 10, 10 or 12. Um, you know, I had a normal childhood, like probably up until, you know, uh, I'd say like middle school. Um, you know, it just got like family problems. Uh, my mom, you know, she raised my brother and I after um, my dad went to New York, uh, you know, she still, she still did the best she can and she, you know, um, I was a good student, but, um, I definitely did have a problem with, like, missing school. I didn't like to go a lot, but when I did go, I had, uh, I always had good grades, um, and I graduated with my diploma, um, but yeah, I was a good I was a good student. I just missed a lot of these. Um, my favorite subject would probably be math. I was always good at math. Um, after high school, um, probably even, I'd say like towards the end of my senior year, um, I kind of drifted off into like my own my own world really. Um, I think it's just because I knew I knew a lot. Like well not a lot, but I, I just knew I knew too much for my own good, you know? Like I grew up way too fast in a way that I guess you could consider it peer pressure. Um, but you know like as a child growing up, you know, I had a I had a good childhood. Um, I danced from like two to twelve, probably ten, ten or twelve. Um, but I had a good I had a good childhood. You know, I had my mom and dad both together in the same house up until I probably was in like middle school. Um, you know, my dad left. He went to New York. He got in a new relationship. Um, it kind of just made like. You know, my mom have all of the pressure with like me now going into middle school and like all of the things that, you know, like she would have to handle by herself, including my brother. You know, he was still in high school at the time. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I had a good childhood. I think like my mom and dad raising my brother, sister and I, you know, they kind of like, they, they did definitely what they had to do. Do you have any favorite childhood memories you can think of? Um, no, not off the top of my head, no. So fast forward, we out here in Kensington. How'd that happen? Um, I ended up out here, uh, 
really by choice, I guess you could say. Uh, you know, I just, the habit of like Percocets and, uh, you know, opiates in that kind of way was expensive and instead of paying like that amount, you know, it's, I always knew about Kensington like from from being younger and like with older friends. Uh, you know, I just figured like the relationship I was in that instead of us paying, you know, the price of a Percocet, why not come down here and pretty much get it more than half. Well, when I first got here, uh, you know, I still had my car, I still had my house. You know, so I pretty much would travel here and go back to Bristol. So like, I guess it wasn't the full experience because I wasn't like on the streets, but I still was down here, you know? But like, I would be like, s just super sketched out, like, and especially at nighttime, like in the car, like, you know, doors locked, just looking at like everybody and like imagining like, how can, you know, like, how can somebody manage to, like, be okay and just, you know, everyday life out here like this? Like, how is that possible, you know? Like, not that as if I was too good, like, or, like, better than them just because I was going back to the house. But, yeah, in a way, kind of, that's how it was. Like, you know, even though we were doing the same drugs and we're going to the same blocks, it's like... You know, it just, it, it, I feel like I just looked at it definitely different than how I look at it now. What jobs have you had in the past? Um, I mean, I was always a, like, uh, like for, like, pizza shops. I was always, like, a counter girl, you know, answering the phones and taking orders and stuff. Um, I also did pizza delivery driving, like, for those places. Um... That's really like, it was all under the table though, you know, like it wasn't on the books, um, which honestly I didn't mind at all. It was, it was good at the time, you know, up until like everything was gone. Um, Cause you know, it's, it's hard to manage both lives, you know. Um, but, uh, when did you realize you had an addiction? Uh, honestly, I, I've noticed and I kind of realized and accepted that when I was younger. Uh, I kind of could tell when it would be like all of my friends and I and, you know, like they could stop and after we were like done and, you know, the party was over and it was like I just always wanted more, you know. Like, the thought and, like, the, the, the craving, I guess, for, like, that feeling was always still there. And it's, like, you know, while all of them, like, maintained and, like, kept going on, it's, like, I was still stuck in that, uh, in that mind frame, I guess. Um, you know, my mom, it was always kind of just my mom. Cause at the, at the point when like I was like on actually like, like drugs that, you know, my mom could actually start telling like, it wasn't just smoking pot, it, it was pills and you know, yeah, marijuana on top of it. But uh, yeah, I was in a relationship, um, you know, and uh, we came down here together with our car. Well, I feel like any relationship down here, you know, it's not that you guys don't want to be together and that you don't love each other, but drugs become like your number one priority. And uh, you can't like give that type of love that like you used to at one point to the other person. And. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say like break up, broken up, like definitely damaged, yeah.
a damaged relationship completely. But, you know, like, what comes with drugs is, like, you know, uh, getting locked up and, you know, hospitals and hospitals, institutions and death. Like, that's what they say in AA, you know. That's all that comes with this. Um, so as of right now, you know, uh, my my uh, son's father, he's, he's locked up right now. Yeah, I mean, it definitely is scary. Um, for the most part, I try to go back to my mom's. If not, you know, I stay with, like, this uh, good friend of mine that I met. You know, she, she lets me stay with her. If not that, then, you know, I'll just pay somebody or something to, to stay, you know, the night with them or whatever. Um, honestly, I really couldn't even tell you how I managed to survive last winter. I really don't, because I wasn't even inside at all. Like, I was on the streets, like, with my, with my, with my son's father. You know, we, we, we were outside together every day, and uh, I don't even know how we managed. I really don't. How do you make money out here to buy stuff? Um, well, boosting was like an option for a while. Um, but other than that, I mean, I try to get it by any, like, any way possible, you know, whether it's like asking help from somebody or whatever the case may be. So how much would you say you spend every day on your drug habits? Um, at least $200, like at least, um, but I'd say probably at most maybe like five. And what, and what type of drugs do you spend that money on? Um, I, I do uh, powder, powder hard and um, dope. And what's, what's a day out here look like for you now, a day in your life? Um, you know, I just I get up if I am sleeping. Uh, but, you know, I just, it's really just about maintaining, like, and, like, comes down to surviving. You know, it's kind of hard being out here yet by yourself, let alone even if you do have help, but it's just, yeah. It's a tough, it's a tough life you're living, Melanie. You know, you seem like a sweetheart, a darling. You look like mm -hmm. a movie star. Do you think you'll try to get yourself back into rehab and that way you won't just be surviving anymore? Yeah, um, I think about it every day. I really do. And it's like the times that I do go forward with it. You know, I, I always call my mom because she always is there to help. Um, but you know, I just, I, I need to do something soon, you know, it yeah. is getting old with being out here, it's tiring. My biggest regret would probably be to, you know, make drugs the priority that I have made it in my life. And what have you learned from all these experiences that you have been through? Um, it would probably be definitely to stay humble, you know, wait your turn, like, in life that, you know, like, when you can't always get what you want, like, when it's bad times going on, just remember, like, good times are coming, and, you know, with good times, that there's always going to be them bad moments, like, life isn't perfect, but, like, just remain who you are, and, like, remain you know okay melanie we about to wrap things up what are your short-term goals now short-term goals um definitely get into a rehab um stay positive and um yeah what are some things you love most about yourself um i'm outgoing you know and I'm understanding. When you was a little girl, 
what do you want to become when you grow up? Um, when I was younger, um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. What's your favorite season of the year? Summer. Why? Uh, I don't know. I just like summertime, like the weather and um, just like the, I guess, like clothing. Why is I guess? If you have family or your friends see this video, what message would you like to send to them? Um, that I love them and you know that to just be patient with me. You know that like I know what I'm doing isn't really what everybody's expected and like what everybody kind of thought it would be but it's also not what I thought it would be. And to just be patient and um, to just give me some time. If you had one wish, what would you wish for? Um, to be sober. What's your message for the world? Uh, I guess my message for the world would be to reach out, you know, and to talk to somebody and don't just like hold it in, you know. Like sometimes we think like we're alone and um, we think like people don't understand and you know that, well, it's not gonna help anyway and you know that they don't, they don't care. Um, you just gotta know who to talk to and like the right people to open up to, you know, um, and that you're not alone. Is there anything you're in need of that we can help you with? Um, you know, probably, uh, Definitely like clothes, um, you know, like, I mean, I wear like a small in short, like bottoms and tops and um, shoes, I guess, size six. Okay, AML fam, let's help our girl out. You can send it to the P.O. box and, you know, I'll give it to her. So we about to take flight. Remember, don't be bitter, be better. Until next time, we out there. Peace out.